oncology practice has become very complex and every patient, every cancer patient essentially ends up meeting doctors from every specialty. So incorporating that multidisciplinary team in clinical care is going to be key moving forward in oncology. Culture change is always challenging. I think that it takes work and it takes effort, but I think that when you get the motivation going and the team start to see the value of that multidisciplinary interaction, it becomes an easier um, movement forward once you've got it started. So you have to start somewhere. That first step is probably the most difficult, but once you start seeing the rewards and you see the patient's doing better, they're happier with that communication, your lives get easier working together as a team, I think that that keeps that motivation going. If it really was difficult every step of the way, I don't think we would have been as successful as we have been in implementing multidisciplinary care. I think that you've taken a great first step. It's been very interesting learning about Argentina and the different ranges of practice that there are across the country. Uh, I think that you've taken a, an amazing first step by opening your ears and trying to learn about the technology that's happening around the world. And I think that you need to take careful steps of what can be implemented both broadly, but perhaps taking some first steps at some institutions to start learning deeply about some of the things that are coming down um, the pipeline in terms of technology. I was glad to share a lot of it here and I think there was a lot of good discussion and I hope that you can slowly prepare what components of technology you can safely adopt. I think the safe adoption of technology is probably the key. to other associations such as ISRS or ASTRO and the international organizations that are out there will really help that ongoing dialogue and I hope to continue to stay in contact with you. So I went through in some of my talks about you know, the evolution of the amount of information that's coming at us, how our field has evolved in, and this is, goes back to a different type of multidisciplinary care and that we've actually become more tightly bound to engineers, physicists, working with those disciplines, not just multidisciplinary care across medical practices, so that we can actually adopt technology both safely but most effectively to deliver the best treatments for our patients. I think that moving forward, that joining will become even stronger with technology such as artificial intelligence that everyone likes to talk about, we have to be very careful about, about understanding how we can implement that and meaningfully implement that to help our patients. And I think that you know in the future, the physicians, some physicians may feel threatened by these taking over their traditional roles. And that's why the topic of my talk was the evolution of that moving through practice and understanding that you know that art of medicine that I described and moving towards how do we adopt that technology to really find refine that humanness of medicine from the industrial approaches that we've actually needed to face because our pressures of seeing more patients and doing more with less resources has become very, very large. And so how do we actually embed technology within our practices to help us be more efficient, more safe, deliver higher quality care, and allow for personalization. There's more data that's available at our fingertips today than there ever has been. And I think we're using a very small portion of it. And as much as we say humans only use about 15% of their brain, I would say we're only using 1% of the data we have. And I think there's a lot of work we can do moving forward and it's an exciting time to be in medicine. So I think it'll place a number of different roles. One, it will help improve operational efficiencies of redundant work that we probably would be happy letting go. Um, and it will also minimize human error in that redundant work. Because it's redundant, people don't pay much attention to it. 
and there can be human error. The second piece is that as I talked about multidisciplinary care and quality assurance processes with humans and humans talking, the big exercise around that is bringing perspective and other people's perspective and sometimes that other perspective helps you make a better decision and I think that the artificial intelligence pieces will present data that you may not have looked at before and so it's providing that perspective to the person and the clinician so that they make it, can make better more informed clinical decisions moving forward so it's an empowering tool not a replacing tool.